Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and this is what we're making today. Go ahead and take care of the three things before I get into the process to show you how to make this. Hit the like, subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. So without further ado, let's look at the materials you will need in order to create a cute crafting shirt just like this. The materials that I'll use for this project include my Cricut Maker, green standard grip mat, this Aqua Paper Studio brand of solid iron-on. I'll use my Cricut True Control knife to cut away the excess vinyl. I'll use a pin pen weeding tool, this black heavy cotton t-shirt, and I'm actually going to use my swing out heat press for this. I don't know if you can see it in the camera right now. Um, I'll be using my swing out heat press and a Teflon sheet and a design that I just created in Cricut Design Space that I will show you how to create for yourself. Okay, so without further ado, let's head on over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I am connected to my Cricut Maker. I know that this is a project that you could also do from a Cricut Explore Air 2. The font that, I am that I've decided to use is one that's called Honey and Raspberries and I downloaded it from defont.com. So the first thing that I'll do is type the font that's going to go in the middle of my shirt. And I am going to type crafting and I hit enter life and it is in all caps. And right now the view on my screen is at 50%. I'm gonna bring it up to about 75%. Okay, and I'm just gonna move Crafting Life to the middle and I am also going to align it to center it. I am also going to decrease the line space because I think it's just too much space in between those two words, okay? And then the next thing I'll do is type the words that really define or describe Crafting Life. And for me, and you know, when you're making your shirt you could use any terms you choose, but for me, it is, um, I get ideas, <laughs> ideas come into my head, um, and I'll hit control V because I'm going to use uh, like a middle dot to separate my ideas, my thoughts. Um, so I get ideas, then I buy supplies, then I um, I'm going to do a hit control V to hit the middle dot again. And then I make cute stuff with that control V to get the middle dot again. And um, after I make cute stuff, I would say I show it off. And then with that dot again. And then I would just say that cycle continues. So for me, I get ideas, I buy supplies, and, and instead of buy supplies, I could just put that I go shopping, but that's the same thing. I make cute stuff and then I show it off and then I get ideas and I start the whole thing all over again. So this is what my, uh, let me bring my view down a little bit again. I'm at 50% right now on my view. Now I'm going to take this and I have not edited this font at all. And what I think happens when you try to edit the font, that's when you're unable to curve it. So now that I've not done anything to it, I just typed in what I'm going to, what my descriptors will be. I'm gonna click on curve and I'm just gonna curve it around. I'm gonna curve it as far as it'll curve, okay? And then I will move it so that the whole thing is centered. Okay, and I like the way this looks actually just like this, but I think I want to make it just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit smaller. Um, and what I'm going to do is grab a template from the templates tool and get the classic t-shirts. I'm going to choose a women's short sleeve medium because that's the size shirt that this um, image is going to go on and let me select the whole thing and move it together okay I like it 
I like it like this. Um, now I could make the font bigger. Um, I can make the font bigger. Let me make this font bigger also. I think I'm going to bring it out like that. Okay. I like it. Do I want this font to be a little bit bigger? Let me just check. I want people to really be able to see what it says without any wondering. Okay. I um let me select over the whole thing and align it. Let me center it. Okay. And I am going to go ahead and group it. And because I think I like it just like this, I like it like that. I am going to go ahead and attach this. I am not going to weld it because none of this is script font. Okay. So I have it the way I want it. And now I will click make it. Uh oh, it says it's not supported. Let me see what this says. Oh, okay. My image is too large. Let me bring it down a little bit. I should have paid attention to that. Okay. I don't have the, let me see how big I can go. I don't want to go bigger than 11 anyway. Let me just go to 11. Okay. So my, the width of my design is 11 inches. And now I'm going to click make it. This is going to be so cute. Okay. Now I can mirror my design and I will get my heat transfer vinyl loaded onto my mat. Now, of course, remember I said I never keep my um, vinyl or my image or anything at the very top. I always bring it down just a little bit. So I'm, this is no different. I'm going to bring this down and I will click continue. I am going to be connected to my Cricut maker and I will put my heat transfer vinyl, which is the same thing as everyday iron on. I'm going to put it on my mat with the shiny side down. And I'm going to use more pressure just to make sure it cuts all the way through. Everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera. Okay, I have my vinyl on the mat face down and my design is mirrored. I added tape in the corners because my mat is not that sticky and I still, this mat is still good. So if that ever happens to you, your mat starts to roll up when you put your vinyl down, just put some tape on it and it's fine. Okay, I'm gonna get it loaded into my mat in my uh, Cricut Maker. And I have 10 inches at least behind my machine. I will click the flashing C and let it get started cutting. my design weeded out and I have checked and double checked to make sure that I don't I didn't leave anything in any of the the inner pieces of the letters the material that I'm using is the paper studio brand of solid iron on on the back it tells me what my um, heat setting should be so it's a solid iron on the temperature should be 280 degrees to 315. I have my heat press set to 315 and it is a warm peel. So when I finish pressing this, it'll still be hot. That means I'll let it cool off before I peel the backing from the vinyl, okay? So now I am going to add a little bit of heat to my shirt, about five seconds, and then I'll place the design in the middle and I'll press it for the recommended settings. Let me also say that it says uh, 25 to 30 seconds, okay? So let me make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure. Yes, 25 to 30 seconds. 
Okay, this is a weird angle, but let's do it. I am taking the tag from the shirt and I have not used this heat press in a while, so I'm a little bit excited about that. I am going to just me, pull it out a little bit. Lord, I hope I don't burn myself. This thing is so hot. And I am going to just add some heat to it, to my shirt. See, this is what I was saying. You have to have space for this kind of heat press. Push the tray in, press it down for a few seconds. Okay. And as I, you know, have indicated multiple times, I always put a crease down the middle, just so I'll know where the middle of the design is. So I'm just putting a crease down the middle of the shirt. So I folded it in half and I have a crease here. And I'll just put it on this way. Just press it longer than enough, long enough to give it a crease. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is see. I have a crease down the middle. I am going to put my design on, and some people fold theirs in half and then they line it up with the crease that's in the middle. I don't do that. Um, what I do is I kind of just eyeball it and I haven't had any problems doing it this way. I go down about, um, you know, three finger lengths from the top um, of the shirt. This, this looks good to me. So now I have it where I want it. That's where it's going to go. I'm going to put it back on my heat um, press. And I'm gonna give it a good old pressing. I am going to put my Teflon sheet on. I'm gonna close it, close it up. And I have it set to 25 seconds. Okay, it's getting ready to beep. Okay, I'm gonna take it off. So remember this is a cool, I mean warm peel, not hot. So it's still hot. I'll let it sit for a second. Um, and I typically, and I haven't ever said this before out loud in front of YouTube, but I typically um, press my designs twice. I give it a good press because I just want to make sure that it is, you know, the vinyl is adhered to the shirt. And if it is, if it's adhered well enough, I should get 50 washes out of this. Okay, and I don't want any peeling action. I want it to last for a good 50 washes like it's supposed to. So I will press it again really quickly and then I'll come back. And when I come back, I'm gonna have on this shirt and I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. Okay, so it is warm. Let me go ahead and peel it. I think it's important for you to see that. When you're peeling your backing sheet from your vinyl, from your shirt or whatever you're making. If any of it starts to peel up, you need to press it again. Okay, that means it wasn't pressed enough. All right, I'm gonna put this on and show you what it looks like. Okay, I love the way this turned out and hopefully you were able to follow the process that I showed you in Cricut Design Space. The possibilities for making a shirt like this are endless. I did try to look at it on my iPad to see if the curve option was available and I did not see it. So as far as I know, this option to curve text is only available on a laptop or a desktop. Also, um, just some ideas that were floating through my head as I was making this. If you wanted to make one that say, for example, said mom life, you might do teach, inspire, encourage, motivate, support. If you wanted to do teacher life, it would probably be probably be the same things, right? Teach, motivate, encourage, inspire. 
You can make one that says dog mom. You can make one that says just about anything. As I said, the possibilities are endless. All right, if you haven't already taken care of the three things like you were supposed to do at the beginning of the video, go ahead and do that now. Hit the like, subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. And I want you to be on my journey with me. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.